Our commencement speaker this morning is no stranger to Lindsey Wilson College. In fact, he has been our state senator for the past 13 years, representing Adair, Casey, Pulaski, and Russell counties. More importantly, he is no stranger to this commencement exercise, as I have seen him in the crowd sitting in your seats as he watched his daughter walk across this very commencement stage. So to suggest that Senator McGahey is simply one more politician giving a commencement address is a gross misrepresentation of his affection for this college. He has always been there for Lindsey Wilson College and its students. And I am grateful for your presence here today, Vernie. Would you please join me in giving a warm Lindsey Wilson College welcome to our commencement speaker, our friend, Senator Vernie McGahey. President Lucky, distinguished platform guest, faculty, friends, family, most of all, graduates. It's an honor for me to join you here today. I was uh, a bit nervous when I was asked to say a few words. After all, uh, when you're a commencement speaker, uh, you're expected to share some wisdom, to uplift everyone, and to say something memorable. Then I happened to realize that I can't remember at all spoke at any of my graduation ceremonies or even what was said. Maybe being memorable isn't required after all. Five or ten years from now, you may not remember a thing I say, but that's okay because today it's all about you. As I was reminded by a friend recently, a commencement speaker's role is a lot like that of uh, the deceased at a funeral. Your presence is needed, but you're not expected to say much. I was also surprised uh, that a political person would be asked to speak. I've had a hard time adjusting to being called a politician. I heard the story where there were five surgeons discussing on what candidate would be the best person to operate on. The first uh, surgeon said, I like to see accountants on my table because when you open them up, everything inside is numbered. The second said, yeah, but you ought to try electricians. When you open them up, everything in there is color-coded. Third surgeon said, no, nah, I think librarians are best, because when you open them up, everything is in alphabetical order. Fourth surgeon said, you know, I like construction workers. Those guys always understand when you have a few parts left over <laughs> and when a job takes longer than you said it would. But the fifth surgeon shut them all up. He said, you're all wrong. <clears throat> Politicians are the easiest people to operate on. There's no guts, no heart, no spine, and the head and the rear are interchangeable. <laughs> So I'm just happy to be here. <clears throat> The spotlight today is rightfully on our, our students, and I want to thank you for giving me the thrill and the honor to speak with you on such an important day in your lives. In addition to applauding the, the students, I also want to congratulate everyone who have to make this day possible, the family, the friends, the teachers, the faculty here at Lindsay, who have given the students the support that they needed, and you do all deserve a great sense of pride and accomplishment in this particular day. Most of us see uh, special events as beginnings or endings. It's no different when you speak of a graduation. The commencement cer uh, ceremony is a final step in one important part of your life, but it's also the beginning of your next stage. You've reached the first milestone, and it's appropriate to take a breather and ask the question, where do I go from here? By your very presence here today, I know that each of you have special gifts. Uh, you've proven that by sticking with your studying and uh, persevering. But really, I'm not here to pat you on the back. Uh, what I really want to do today, I want to challenge each of you. My challenge to you is not to squander the gifts and talents you have developed, but to push your talents and abilities 
heights to even greater heights. By pushing yourself to excel, you'll be joining the ranks of some of the world's most accomplished people. I read a study once that was done by a University of Chicago professor who took a close look at 120 accomplished athletes, artists, and scholars. You want to find out a trait among all these people that had led to their success. And guess what he found was the most common trait of these successful people? Do uh, you think it was intelligence, good luck, uh, wealth, luck? Nah, the most common trait he found among those that were at the top of their trade were that these people ex uh, possessed extraordinary drive. Developing this drive means following your interests with abandon. It means simple drop of water can bore a hole through a rock. Our Grand Canyon, one of the most awe-inspiring uh, sites in the world, was created by the persistent pressure of water on our uh, canyons. Likewise, our world is shaped by those of you who are persistent in following your interests. Let me share a quote with you from President Calvin Coolidge. As you know, he was nicknamed Silent Cal because he didn't have a lot to say. But when he did speak, everyone listened because they knew it was going to be important. Here's what he said. He said, nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not because nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is common. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. But he said persistence and determination are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. And that's a lot of words from a man who didn't say much. But I think the quote is a gem. Think back to some of the most rewarding things that have happened to you. They weren't just those things that happened, but they were those things that you had to work for, you had to strive for, and you had to put effort in two. The good rule of thumb uh, is that the more you put into something, the more you're going to get out of it. And that's true no matter what you're involved in. I'm reminded of the story of a youngster who was asked by his mother to get the mop off the back porch for her. The youngster replied, Mom, it's dark out here. Being the mom, she replied, Son, don't be afraid. Jesus is there. Young boy looked back at his mom and said, then let Jesus get it. <laughs> <laughs> Too many times we're like this young boy. We're confronted by fears and hardships. Even the most successful people hit roadblocks sometimes. But what sets those people apart and what makes them successful is a determination to move on despite the roadblocks. Thomas Edison is said to have failed many, many times as he tried to develop a light bulb. When asked why he didn't give up, he replied, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. <laughs> Thomas knew that as long as you don't give up, you haven't failed. You're at a time in your life of big choices. The next steps, uh, in many ways, lead into the unknown. Unknown challenges that may put you to the test like you've never been tested before. Transitions can be some of the toughest parts of your life. Some uh, mistakenly see the uncertainties ahead as a time of crisis. But crisis is always accompanied by a twin called opportunity. They can easily be mistaken for each other, but don't let them fool you. This is a time in which you open the door to possibility, a whole world of possibility. When it seems that your ship has not come in, Jump in and swim out to the ship. Don't wait for the jump, for it to jump into your arms. Be persistent and go get it. You've all proven that you know how to make the most out of your opportunities. You've gotten a great star here at Lindsay by successfully making it to this graduation day. And you live in a free and prosperous country where opportunities are limitless. If you combine these advantages with a never give up attitude, you can accomplish your dreams. 
I remind you that the skills each of you possess will make you increasingly important members of your community. And that will give you new opportunities to give back to your community. <laughs>